Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez for LearnSolidWorks.com, and in this video series, we're going to be creating the geometry similar to the perfume bottle on the screen. Now there are two different ways that I want to talk about focus on and show you the pros and cons of each. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to create a new metric file. We want to start a sketch on the front plane. And we're going to start by creating a line that goes from the origin up to 150 millimeters. Now once we create this line, we're going to go up to our tools, down to sketch tools, and down to sketch picture. You want to insert the image. You want to go ahead and move it roughly into place. And we're going to scale the height of this image down to 425. So as we look at this, we want to place it so that the center point or the origin is roughly in the bottom. Now remember this picture and most pictures are going to have a considerable amount of perspective unless they're very large taken from very far away. We do want to do full image transparency at about 50%. This is just going to be a reference for us. So let's go ahead and say OK and get started creating the rest of our geometry. Now, before I create an object like this, I usually will set up reference sketches and reference planes. Now, in this case, we have it set up so that the top plane is at the bottom of our bottle. And to create a new plane, we'll go and simply select the line and select the endpoint. I always like to rename these planes as well. So we're going to call this one bottle top. Next, I want to select bottle top, control select the top plane and create a new mid plane. Now with this selection, it'll automatically create that mid plane. And again, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to be mid plane. <clears throat> because I know exactly what these planes are, I'm going to go ahead and hide them. The first method that we want to take a look at is creating a, in this case, a solid lofted body. Now we're going to do a solid lofted body with these cuts already factored into the original sketches. Now there are some pros and cons to doing it this way, and we'll talk about those. But we want to make sure that we're on the Features tab. We start our first sketch on the top plane, and we place a circle that's 80 millimeters in diameter. It's going to be roughly the size of the base of this bottle. I'm then going to look at this Normal 2, use my Polygon tool with three sides, and start at one of the quadrant points, and draw this triangle so it's coming into the body. Now there are a few things that we want to do here. First thing we want to do is we want to give this a two millimeter dimension. I want to make sure that we're cutting into it about two millimeters. Next, we want to make sure that this point is vertical with this point. We don't need this horizontal line so we can delete it. And we actually don't need the ends of these. So I'm going to use the power trim tool and then create a circular pattern. Under entities to pattern, we'll go ahead and we'll select these two, making sure that we have four instances. Now, once you create a circular pattern in a sketch, you'll notice that the entities are still blue, depending on the options you selected, whether or not to define the radius of it or the instance spacing. Uh, you may or may not have more or less flexibility here, but really what we want to do is we want to take the point that was used to create the pattern and drag that to the origin. Then I'm going to use T on the keyboard using my power trim option to remove the additional geometry that we don't need. You may need to zoom in depending on the size of your sketches. And then we want to make sure we take care of all the geometry up here. Because there is a reference circle here, we're going to have to do this. Now once we do that, we still have a fully defined sketch. We can go ahead and exit this. And second, we want to create a sketch on bottle top. Now I'm going to take sketch two. I'm going to use convert entities and simply bring that into my top sketch. Now the reason this works is because we're twisting from a point at the bottom and we're going 90 degrees up to the top. So I can simply reuse that sketch, but I do need a start and end profile for a loft. Next, we want to sketch on the mid plane. Now, because we do have this 90 degree twist, we know that the plane we're sketching on is completely in the middle. We're going to be drawing that at 45 degrees. So we'll start by drawing a circle. In this case, we're going to go to half of the diameter or 40 millimeters, and then we're going to draw a four construction reference line down at 45 degrees. Now notice there's no quadrant point to snap to here, but we want to dimension it at 45 degrees. 
you can either add a horizontal reference line or you can start the dimension tool, select your front plane, and then select this line and place a 45 degree dimension. So that's a nice trick that you can use whenever you don't want to add additional reference lines. You can simply grab another plane, in this case the front plane, or the right plane would work as well. Next we're going to use our polygon, three-sided, and drag a triangle again. Now this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to run into some issues. When we start to dimension this, as we drag away, it's going to automatically want to do horizontal or vertical. So when you're in close to there, you want to right click and that'll lock this in as an ordinate or a line dimension. We can put in two millimeters. Next, we want to get rid of this line. We want to trim these away. And then we want to make sure that this is stuck to this line here. So we're going to add a coincident relation. Then we're going to use a circle pattern. Again, we're going to entities to pattern both of these lines. Say OK. And make sure that the center point of this pattern is the center point of the sketch or the origin. Then as we start to trim away this dimension in this section here, as we go back here, we might find that we're going to lose some references. Now, as soon as we get rid of all these lines, depending on the way you place your relations, if you have equal relations or coincident relations, you might find that some of this gets underdefined. You simply need to reattach some of those mates, some of those references, so that you have a fully defined sketch. Once we're done here, let's go ahead and come back out to the model. We're going to hide sketch one, and we're going to create our first solid geometry. So from our feature tab, we're going to use lofted boss base. We're going to go from here to here to here. Now, before you say OK, there are a few things that we need to handle. Now, as we zoom in, these green points are the origin points of our loft. So we want to make sure that each of them is at the base or the root of that polygon to make sure that we're actually twisting the right direction. So what you'll find is, depending on where you click, that does change quite a bit. So we want to make sure that we drag this point over here. And it only snaps to endpoints of lines in this case. So you'll just have to move it a few times to make it snap. So now as we look at our solid geometry, everything here looks pretty good. Now some of the downsides to this method. First, placing a fillet on the edge doesn't really work that great. Now if we decide to come back and place a standard fillet on this bottom edge, it doesn't have tangency as it goes across. You see that we have to apply it to each of these. And if we get past that two millimeters, it starts to do some interesting things with the cuts. Uh, you know, it might be okay depending on your specific geometry, uh, but it also might cause you some problems down the road. So you see once we get to four millimeters, it doesn't work. Three millimeters seems to be okay, but it is a limit to how much we can do because of the way that this geometry is handled. The second downside to something like this is having to use the shell, All right? So if we're gonna shell this, say five millimeters, what it's going to do is it's going to create some points on the inside because remember it's taking this and it's offsetting at five millimeters. So if it takes this edge and it offsets five millimeters, it's creating this face right here. Now we do have some ways that we can go about this by going to insert face delete using the delete and patch option. We can remove this internal geometry and SOLIDWORKS does a pretty good job of fixing it up, but it won't be perfect in this case or in geometry like this. So you notice that it leaves these edges here. And as we look at this, they don't really appear to have tangency as they go across. All right, so that could produce some problems. Let's go ahead and go back to a front view. But the physical geometry here actually looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and talk about the other method. I want to expand my solid bodies and I want to hide this and reshow sketch one. So again, we're going to start on the top plane. This time I'm simply going to draw an 80 millimeter circle. Make sure that the circle is at your origin. Depending on the view, I mean, sometimes when I start to sketch, I will end up sort of at a, an isometric view. It becomes harder to snap to things like the origin. So it's usually a good idea to go to a normal to view. Now again, I'm gonna sketch on bottle top and I wanna take this and use convert entities. Now the reason I didn't redraw that is because I want it to link to this original sketch. If I change that original sketch at all, I want it to affect the rest of them. And then we're gonna to go to the midplane, and again, a circle, 
40 millimeters. So now when we go to loft this, we have an interesting challenge. Let's go ahead and hide sketch one. So we're gonna start a loft and go from here to here to here. And notice where I click on those entities is where those green dots are placed, but we no longer have a snap point. We don't have a start and end point. So as I drag these around, and I'll look at this in sort of a front view, as I drag these around, it changes the way that this loft is handled. Now that's obviously a bad thing if you want complete control over what's going on here. So in order to make this work, I'm gonna go back to sketch five, I'm gonna edit that sketch, and I'm gonna draw a horizontal line. And I'm gonna trim this. So when I do that, I need to go back to sketch six. Now sketch six was converted from that original circle. So it didn't update because I didn't bring both of those sketch entities in. And then sketch seven, I'll do the same thing in here and I'll go ahead and I'll make these semicircle and trim this backside. So now if I go to loft these, I go from here to here to here, I have complete control over the endpoints, right? So it gives me the same physical geometry. And then I just need to mirror this across this face, which can be the front face or um, just simply selecting that body. And then we can merge solids. So the only difference here is now I have a reference edge or a split edge on the sides. But if we hide the edges, we have complete tangency as we go across. So everything here looks pretty good. Uh, that does bring up an interesting point. Now, how do we make the cut? Now, there are a few ways that you might approach this. If you've been using SOLIDWORKS a little a bit, you might say, well, I'll just create a helix. So you create a circle, you'll go up to the curves menu, you'll create a helix. The problem with a helix is it doesn't take into account the changing curvature from the bottom to the middle to the top. A helix is going to go from this point at a certain radius value, a certain pitch, to this point, and then back out to this point. It doesn't account for all the curvature here, so the cut is not going to look right. In a case like this, I suggest showing sketch one, creating a new sketch on the top plane, in which we create a line, and the direction of the line doesn't really matter, just make sure that it's horizontal or vertical. And if you wanna give it a dimension, all we need to do is we need to make sure that it's at least longer or it completely exits this body and say, okay. Next, we're gonna go into our surface tab. We're gonna do a swept surface using this newly created line as our profile and the vertical line in sketch one as our path. So this is gonna allow us to do a few things. We go to options, twist along path, and depending on which version of SOLIDWORKS you're using, this here, this menu option might look a little bit different, but they all have the twist along path option. We can determine if we want it to be in degrees, in this case 90, in which case it'll rotate around. We can flip the direction. We can uh, merge tangent faces. We can show the preview if we want and make sure that this is actually the twist that we're looking for. Once we say okay, we're gonna go ahead and hide sketch one. And then we wanna create a curve that we can use for our cut. So from the curves dropdown, we'll do a split line. We're gonna do an intersection. And depending on your geometry, it may or may not work for you to try to split the revolve here, or uh, in this case, the loft. You could also do this body as a revolve and maybe simplify the process a little bit. But in this case, we're gonna use the, the swept surface and we're gonna use that to cut this face. And we say, okay, we hide the surface and now we have a path for our cut. So this is where it starts to get interesting. On the top plane, again, we're gonna use our polygon option with a three-sided. We're gonna come up here, and once we draw that, we're gonna to go to a normal two view, and we're gonna start adding some relations in here. We're gonna make sure that those are vertical. We're gonna dimension the depth at which it cuts, two millimeters. And in this case, we don't have to trim anything. We're gonna leave it as is, and now we're gonna to go to our feature tab and we're gonna do a swept cut. So we're gonna sweep this profile along this edge. So now what we've done is we've taken that profile and we've cut this body away. Now, depending on the size of the cut and the way that it twists, 
you might have to go back and address a few areas of concern. You notice that it looks like it did an interesting cut in this specific segment. You notice the way that it twisted. So we can go back into our parameters and go to options and we can say keep normal constant or we can do twist along path. Uh, in this case, we can twist along path because we know that we're going 90 degrees and then that cut will twist with it as well. So you will have to play with the options depending on the way that your geometry is specifically set up. Um, in this case, I'm gonna do keep normal constant and we wanna rotate this around and see the way the cut is coming through the top. So with that preview, you'll notice that the cut is a little bit off here. We can use uh, tangent propagation. We can do uh, twist along path with normal constant and maybe give it uh, 45 degrees. Make sure that it's rotating the appropriate direction. We can try 90 degrees. And it looks like 90 degrees with reverse rotation is gonna give us exactly what we want. And we can say okay. And you will notice that there are times where this does not completely exit. Uh, so that does also produce its own problems because the, uh, the profile is not completely coming through the top here because it's at a slight angle. So those are things that you will have to address and fix. Um, everything looks okay on the bottom. If it's uh, not okay on the top, we could try to use those delete face options to get rid of these small fragments. And SOLIDWORKS does a pretty good job of removing those. So we'll say face, delete, we'll remove that and try to patch it. And it's gonna trim it back. And if it can, it'll patch it. And it looks like it did a pretty good job here. So now we could take that geometry and patch uh, patch any areas that we need to if we have got some problems like at the top, and then we can rotate it around by using a circular pattern of that feature. So we can go ahead and select a cylindrical edge and uh, or an axis, a temporary axis. We'll go ahead and show temporary axis, and we can select any of those, and then we can pattern the feature as it goes around. Now the last thing that I wanna talk about here, and this is probably pretty important, is the fact that this method here, the swept cut, if we do a, in this case, a shell before that, it doesn't affect the swept cut at all, right? So we didn't have to go back in on the inside, we didn't have to remove any material, we didn't have to do anything like that. The swept cut just sort of works because it doesn't rely on any internal geometry or external geometry. It's the revolved or the swept surface that we created as the path and then the swept cut and everything was, was completely fine on the outside. Bringing back our sketch one, let's go ahead and go back to a front view. We'll hide this solid body and take one last look at it. So these sweep cuts right here, uh, realistically with a component like this, these were done after the fact. They were cut after the, the glass was already heated and formed and, and molded into shape and then they were cut after. And it's not something that a crisp edge that's gonna be done in glass. Now, of course, if you're not making something that's glass, it might be a different story, but that feature being done after the fact would tell me that this design or something like this would be much better suited for doing that cut after the design was created as well. Now, the reason that's important is because if we need to create this physical component, you might need to go ahead and create a version of this, a configuration of this, that doesn't have that cut. Now, if you do that as the original loft where we had everything included in the sketches, you can't really do that very easily. You have to come in and you need to delete these faces and, and allow it to patch it. And it's just not a very valid route for you to create the manufacturing documentation that you need. So keep that in mind anytime you're trying to replicate some geometry or reverse engineer something, really think about the way that it was manufactured and that gives you some insight into how you should model it. So even though it was easier for us to model everything in one loft, it doesn't necessarily make the most sense. So I hope you learned a few things, I hope you picked up a few tricks and thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll check out some of our other videos.